That's right, your eyes do not deceive you. This video is shot in glorious, ultra-wide in honor of the target audience of this video, which is people who have a 21.9 monitor. Now, if you look at something like the Steam hardware survey, we're still a pretty tiny minority of the overall gaming population. And yeah, I said we, I did throw myself in here. I spent a long time with an ultra-wide 3440 by 1440 monitor as my main gaming display. I have kind of moved on to 4K OLED as my main gaming display, but I still do appreciate certain games in an ultra-wide resolution. However, if you're looking for benchmarks, how does your GPU do, all of that kind of stuff, you're a little bit underserved. And so I got some comments on my video comparing the 3080 12 gigabyte that I have against the uh, 4090, where, you know, honestly, my recommendation on whether the 4090 made sense came down to what resolution you are looking at, as well as just whether you can financially responsibly support spending the ridiculous amounts of money that a 4090 costs. But basically, a big part of my conclusion was that at 1440p, the 3080 does great, and the 4090 is likely to be CPU limited from offering its full performance advantage versus the 3080. Whereas at 4K resolution, because that offers a harder workload to the GPU, you are less frequently CPU limited on the 4090, and it's more likely to stretch its legs relative to the 3080, and also the 3080 does struggle a little bit more at the 4K resolution. You're usually targeting 60 FPS rather than high refresh rates, and oftentimes even to get to 60, you are making some compromises. Now, what about Ultra wide. Well, some games look absolutely glorious in ultra wide. Some games don't support it well or at all. But when it's working right, it is awesome, but it also comes at a penalty compared to normal 1440p, for example. Because by adding in these extra pixels at the edge of the screen, that is now more work for your GPU to calculate. So your 3080 is not gonna perform as well at ultra wide 1440p as it does at 16 by nine 1440p. But it's also not as demanding as 4K resolution. So when you're dis deciding, you know, how well does it do? Maybe you already have a 3080, you're thinking about upgrading, maybe you're on a 21.9 monitor and you're looking for a GPU upgrade. A 3080 offers significantly, you know, more wallet-friendly price right now than a 4090 does, but is it good enough? Like I said, those extra pixels on the ends of the screen. So that's why we're looking at this comparison today. Now my test platform is an R9 5950X CPU with uh, 32 gigabytes of 3600 CL6 16 memory and this is all actually running on an 850 watt power supply and does seem to be running just fine I haven't had any issues with the 4090 um, at, although keep in mind that some CPUs like if you're running an overclocked 13900k or something like that combined with the 4090 you might need to be looking into some higher end stuff but anyway let's run the benchmarks and I'll pop back at the end with some final thoughts let's start our comparison with Plague Tale Requiem and I'm looking at this for a couple of reasons one is this represents a next generation of console games where it's not supporting last gen consoles so it's you know ps5 xbox series only and that means it's incredibly demanding and we can see the 3080 12 gigabyte dipping below 60 f uh 60 fps at times here whereas the 4090 is well over 100 FPS much of the time, although dipping below 100 is still at a very high frame rates, whereas the 3080 12 gigabyte certainly needs some help. However, this is at the ultra settings, and we don't really necessarily need to be playing games at their ultra settings, or you could use something like DLSS quality. So here we're looking at the 3080 12 gigabyte with DLSS quality, and again, in a lot of uh, games, you kind of have the choice between dropping settings or using DLSS or both, and they're pretty good options. So here we see the 3080 with DLSS is not able to catch up to the performance of the 4090, even at native. However, it is now giving you a pretty comfortable frame rate, especially for a single player game like this. I mean, on console, this game is locked to 30 FPS. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, later on in this game, you can get some scenes that can end up pretty CPU limited, which is also another thing to think about because here we're looking at Spider-Man Remastered. This is at the very high settings, so that's no ray tracing, very high preset. And wait, what, is this the 4090? Not really 
outperforming the 3080 12 gigabyte. And apologies, it's hard to get the web swinging perfectly synchronized here. What's going on here? This is a CPU limit. Now I talked about this in my other video, but let me explain a little bit more. Of course, the CPU doesn't show 100% utilization. Look at the GPU. The GPU is not being fully utilized on the RTX 4090. And that's because the game can't use all 32 threads. That's just because the type of work a CPU does in gaming uh, just isn't able to parallelize out to 32 threads. So this is a CPU limit. And that's why the 4090 is basically tying the 3080 here. This is with ray tracing on, and you can see that that actually increases the CPU workload. So we're actually still limited here. Now, this I want to show you guys is the difference between DLSS quality and then uh, versus native, and you can see that DLSS is not really helping the 4090 perform any better. Notice the 4090 is on the left and the right here. So I'm showing you that normal DLSS does not improve frame rate when you are in a CPU limited situation. However, DLSS frame generation um, compared with DLSS quality here, you can see that frame generation is, well, almost doubling the frame rate here. What's going on? Well, that's because frame generation isn't really having the engine generate any new frames. It's artificially creating in-between images between two real frames that help smooth out the motion. So keep in mind that while this smooths out the motion, some of these frames don't look quite as good, and they also don't increase the performance of the game. You actually get a little bit of extra latency rather than less latency with the increased frame rate. And I'm trying to show you in motion, like slow down here, I feel like there's a little bit more fuzziness around Spider-Man. So like the image quality is a bit worse with frame gen. It also doesn't interact real well with V-Sync and frame rate limiters, which is something I talked about in a different video. Uh, and I don't think I wanna delve too far into right at this second, but basically frame gen does help in CPU limited situations, but it doesn't really, you know, the frames you get out of there are not the same as normal frames. So don't expect them to be. Now here we're looking at Cyberpunk 2077, and this is at the ultra settings, but this is not using ray tracing yet. We're also not using DLSS. And we can see here that the 3080 12 gigabyte is, you know, above and below 60 FPS, above much of the time, whereas the 4090, is well over 100 FPS, offering much of a higher refresh rate experience. And for a lot of people with, you know, a 100, 120, 144 hertz monitor, um, it's certainly getting you there. You can also see that my uh, GPU utilization on the 4090 is not quite as high as on the 3080, meaning I think we are seeing a little bit of a CPU limitation again on my Ryzen 9 5950X CPU here, especially as we get into this scene out in the... Uh, you know, in the open world here. So we could see even a little bit better, not a lot, but a little bit better performance from the 4090 here on a uh, even faster CPU, like one of the new 13th gen Intels or 7000 series Ryzen's. But the performance here was quite good. However, we can also use ray tracing in this game. Now I'm using the RT Ultra preset right now, and this is without any DLSS. And you can see now the 4090 is actually just about doubling the performance of the 3080. And I've noticed that when it's not held back by the CPU, pretty much doubling the performance, especially when we're factoring in ray tracing, is fairly typical for the 4090 versus the 3080 here. And you can see that one, you know, the 4090 is giving us a roughly 60 FPS experience, not that there aren't some dips below, and the 3080 12 gigabyte is giving us a roughly 30 FPS experience. Also keep in mind that Cyberpunk actually has a more demanding ray tracing setting, RT Psycho Lighting, which I actually don't have enabled here yet. And the game is apparently going to be coming out with an update with an RT Overdrive mode, which will be even more demanding. So I guess what I'm showing you here is that while the 3080 does great at at this resolution, that doesn't mean it can just max out anything, including with ray tracing at the native resolution. But the key word there again is of course the native resolution. So again, here we're con confirming 30 versus 60 average um, with some dips below. However, if we add in DLSS quality, now notice that they're both running DLSS quality, but I've actually kicked the 4090 up to the RT Psycho, meaning the currently highest graphic settings you can possibly use in Cyberpunk 2077 before they give us the RT Overdrive update. Whereas the R RTX 3080 12 gigabyte, I left at RT Ultra just to show you guys that it can't even reach a 60 FPS experience with DLSS quality at RT Ultra at this resolution. 
So with 3080 12 gigabyte, uh, you would definitely be having to either turn down more ray tracing settings or use DLSS more aggressively. You could go down to balanced, although I feel like that at this resolution, personally going past quality does start to have more image quality compromises. And, um, you know, you could go with just RT reflections or something like that and probably get a much happier frame rate. So I'm not saying you can't use ray tracing in a heavy ray tracing title on the 3080 at this resolution. You just will be having to use DLSS aggressively or tweak some of those ray tracing settings, whereas the 4090 kick on DLSS, you can just max the thing out. Absolutely no problems whatsoever. Now let's go to another game, and this is a, a DX11 title, so I like to throw in a few different APIs here. So this is um, God of War, and we're running at the ultra settings. Now I didn't turn on the extra, I think there's an extra uh, reflections setting you could turn up even a little bit higher here, but you can see that the 3080 is delivering excellent performance at the native resolution. When you go up to DLSS quality, it's even better, but the 4090 is just absolutely crazy here. And by the way, this scene gives you a better idea of what I think typical gameplay performance numbers look like. Some some areas are more demanding, some a bit less, but I think this, this scene right here is fairly typical, which is why I lingered on that for a bit. Now here, we're seeing Forza Horizon 5, and if you're thinking that the 4090 isn't doing that much better than the 3080 here, I mean, it's clearly better, but not like doubling the performance. Once again, this is a CPU limited situation, despite the CPU not reporting uh, more than about 25% usage. 25% of my 32 threads is eight threads, and many games are just programmed to utilize about eight threads effectively. And you can see the GPU usage dipping below 100% here, so this is definitely a CPU limit on the 4090's performance here. But what I want to show you here, here is maxed out settings, both GPUs delivered excellent performance. I don't think anybody would be unhappy with what the 3080 was delivering here. If we go to a little bit of an older ray tracing title, this is RT Ultra. This is really just ray traced shadows in this game, and then you can adjust how much shadow ray tracing you want. We can see that the 3080 it delivers good, play, absolutely playable, above 60 FPS at native. With DLSS, it's a legitimate high refresh rate experience. And the 4090 is again giving you maxed out, you know, 100, you know, if you have 144 hertz ultra wide monitor, something like that. Uh, you're very rarely dip dipping below your maximum refresh rate, and that's at the native. If you have some kind of 240 hertz monitor or something like that, you know, kick on DLSS or whatnot. And you can see here um, all of the final average results. Again, doing excellent in all of them. Now, if you don't want the ray trace shadows in this game, because honestly, they don't add all that much to the image, both GPUs are giving a high refresh rate experience with the 3080, doing great on a 100 or a 120 hertz monitor, and the 4090 would not feel out of place on a 240 hertz monitor, and you can actually see a, a GPU uh, limited by the CPU a little bit there at times on the 4090, because again, the frame rates are getting so uh, crazy, the CPU starts to struggle to keep up. Let's look at some really CPU limited situations here. This is now Horizon Zero Dawn, and we can see once again the 4090 not doing much better than the 3080, and that's because of the CPU limitation. Once again, you can see the GPU being underutilized, especially on the 4090, and that's because the game is doing everything it can on the CPU. It can't take 100% advantage of my uh, of my CPU here, so that's the um, that's the reason why you don't see 100% because not all the threads are being utilized. Now here, once again. We're seeing another game, this is Red Dead Redemption 2, and I've just slid the overall preset to favor quality to all the way to the right. And we're once again seeing the 3080 delivering an excellent experience at this resolution. With DLSS quality, it's an even better experience frame rate wise, although I feel like the hair in this game does not look good. If you look at his hair, uh, I, I don't think it looks great with DLSS in this game, which can be a little bit distracting. But again, the baseline performance of the 3080 is great here, and the 4090 is once again fully taking advantage of higher refresh rate monitors. So I think that's the, the biggest thing we're seeing here overall, is that the 3080 does great at this resolution, but, you know, higher refresh rate experience on the 4090. Well, I don't know about you, but after watching those benchmarks, I'm convinced that the RTX 3080 is still an excellent GPU for this resolution, and in a lot of games is still maxing out the game at a high refresh rate experience. And then if you're willing to compromise by using either, you know, a little bit of DLSS or tweaking settings down a little bit, 
I think it'll be able to do very well at this resolution for a long time. Now, that being said, we do see the 4090 delivering significantly better performance, and we see games like Plague Tale Requiem that I have behind me right now, where, you know, the 3080 is going to have to turn down settings a little bit if you want to even get to, you know, get to 60 FPS, let alone be well above it, whereas the 4090 doesn't have to make those types of compromises. Compromises like my heater kicking on right now for background noise and my kids running around upstairs, but, you know, uh, that's the compromise I make to make so many videos on my channel when I have a full-time job. But anyway, my point is here that the, <laughs> that the RTX 4090 does get to stretch its legs here a bit as we go ultra-wide compared to at 1440p. So I think my final thought is that in comparison to my 1440p recommendation where I really feel like the 4090 is kind of overkill, versus the 4K re recommendation where I was like, yeah, I think the 4090 is pretty much worth it if you can financially support it and you are targeting high refresh rate 4K experience. I think my recommendation at this point is a little bit more uh, in the middle. I, I see the point, the 4090 does a good job here, but I really think the 3080 is doing a great job anyway. So what you really need to ask yourself is, is that extra performance on the 4090 really worth the money here because in the end i think with these high-end gpu purchases i really think a lot of it really doesn't come down to how much are you really going to enjoy the game and um I, I, let me just try to explain myself well here so there's a lot of fun in just having the best of the best and so that's, and you know, the, the, the journey of getting it, man, my kids are noisy upstairs right now, but the, the journey of like upgrading your PC, having the best of the best, and if this is your hobby, this is where you drop most of your free income. And again, hopefully you are doing this responsibly. You're still saving for retirement and making rent. You're not putting this on your credit card, that kind of a thing. Then grabbing the, 40, the 4090 for this resolution, I think can make total sense. But I really don't think it's going to drastically improve your enjoyment of the video games that you play at this resolution over an RTX 3080. So if you're actually just thinking about your overall experience in the games, I think on your 3080, you're going to be fine. Drop a couple of settings. Uh, don't even worry about it and you're good to go. And so if you're looking for a you just want to play the games at this resolution, you're building the PC and buying a 49, if spending that amount of money is going to hurt you financially, I don't think it's worth it at this resolution, especially, let's see if they come back in stock, but as of filming, the 4090s are way above their MSRP, which was already really high, whereas 3080s can be had brand new in the $700 range and used for even less than that. So in the end, I really think for most people just putting together a 21.9 bill, the 3080 makes a lot more financial sense than the 4090, but there's nothing wrong with investing a lot in your hobby if you can do that responsibly, and the 4090 is going to be an excellent GPU at this resolution. And I think it'll be interesting to see what we uh, have coming from AMD here in a couple of days. Might be worth waiting for that anyway either way. I hope all of you have an excellent day.